Hello and uh, welcome once again to my channel where my goal is to provide to you um, Oracle related educational content for your personal and professional development. And if you like uh, content like this and find this channel helpful, uh, please uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay informed of when new content is released. And also do not forget to share to your friends. Um, our content for today um, is a video on how to establish a basic Oracle database connection using SQL Developer. And um, I had this request from a lot of uh, uh, folks um, who would like to you know, know how to establish uh, connections between um, SQL developer on their local systems um, into um, their virtual boxes. So, um, so for starters, uh, what is SQL developer? So SQL developer is a free integrated uh, kind of development environment that simplifies uh, the development and management of Oracle databases in both uh, traditional databases in, and in cloud deployments as well. And uh, if you have SQL Developer, you can connect to any target uh, Oracle database schema uh, using Oracle uh, database authentication. So once you're connected, of course, you can perform operations you know, on, on the different objects uh, within the database uh, that you like. Now, if you don't have the SQL Developer, um, again, like I mentioned, it is free. Um, you can certainly download that from uh, the Oracle website. Um, currently, uh, the most updated version is the 21.4.1, and that comes along with JDK 8. So, uh, and you want to make sure that you're downloading the 64 bit if your system um, is a 64 bit or a 32 bit if your system you know, um, is 32 bit. So, you just want to make sure you know exactly what your system is uh, so that you know the right version to download. So, uh, let's go ahead and start, you know, um, the process. So first of all, um, in order for us to be able to, to set up a connection with our instance, first of all, we have to make sure that we understand if we're using a single instance database or um, a database that is part of a rack cluster. So um, for single instance databases, um, I typically uh, would like to connect into um, uh, the server. So the host IP, would be what I would be using um, as part of my connection string. Uh, but for rack cluster databases, I typically would like to connect to uh, the scan listeners. Of course, uh, with rack clusters, a scan listener provides a single name uh, for clients to access Oracle databases running on a cluster. So let's open up um, a session here and, and get the process going. Um, so I will open up one of my uh, prim serve versions if you've been following my video. Uh, this is the server that we had created uh, some videos uh, back. So I'll open up one of these sessions and I'll first of all make this view um, a little bigger here. So let me first of all check. Uh, I would view my Etsy or a tab file just to see which databases I have on this server. Um, the connection today we're going to be trying to establish would be to establish a prim DB session, right? So first of all, we want to make sure because when you're connecting a SQL developer from an external source, uh, you're connecting into the database. So we want to make sure that the database is up and running. So let's set our environmental variables to our prim db, and then we head on to SQL plus as sysdba. All right, fair enough, it looks like it's running. So let's run a select instance name, status from our v dollar instance view. So fair enough, um, our database instance is up and it's in an open state. Now, um, let me get out of this. So one other thing that we need to know um, about uh, connecting from external sources into our database is that there is a process, there is a service that runs on the server called the listener. And um, if you are not familiar with what the listener does, um, a listener is a separate process that runs on the database server which receives incoming connections, uh, requests from external connections and manages the traffic of these requests to the database server. So uh, there are two things I'm gonna make sure that I can do uh, because I'm connecting to a virtual machine, which is technically not hosted or not, not, not part of my local you know, computer, right? Like my laptop or my desktop. So it is external. 
So I want to make sure that actually from my desktop or my laptop, I am able um, to ensure that there's communication. So I would use two commands. The first one is a ping command. And for my ping command, I want to make sure that I use the host name. So I'll do a host name minus I just to get the IP address. And from my local system, from my local system, I would run, the, I would open up a command prompt and um, I would ping that IP address to make sure that within my local system, I am able to establish a connection onto the database server. Now, uh, the ping utility is used to test connectivity to a remote machine. And uh, I just want to make sure that from here, I am able to communicate with that remote machine. So yes, it says I sent four packets, received four packets, and there was 0% uh, loss. So clearly, um, my laptop is able to communicate with my virtual server. Now, from the server side, I want to ensure that um, within my SQL net configuration, I have an entry uh, for PrimDB that can be resolved by a SQL net. So the TNS ping is a utility within Oracle that is used to determine whether or not an Oracle service can be successfully reached. So let's go ahead and TNS ping that service, PrimDB. So um, it takes zero milliseconds to resolve that. So that means uh, um, we are able to resolve that name uh, service. So if you look at this connection string right here, this is key for us to understand because this is what we would need to input in SQL Developer as our connection strings. Now, one of the things I want to mention here, because it says here that the host is PrimCell, and this is just the short form of the name, uh, but I used the TNS ping from my server and it worked well with my host IP address. So I would use that in prefer uh, preferably over, over the PrimCell name. So um, now that I'm able to do that, I just want to make sure one last step. We mentioned the listener. So I want to make sure that the listener is up and running. So let me check the status of the listener. All right, and my listener, fair enough, is up and running and it's supporting my PrimDB service. So now that we are able to assure all of these prerequisites, uh, let's open up SQL Developer. And um, again, for those of you who have not downloaded SQL Developer yet, um, it is free. Uh, it is on the Oracle website. And all you need to have is an Oracle uh, account, which is also free. So you can let that up. So um, SQL Developer looks like this. And for me to be able to establish a connection for, uh, with SQL Developer, um, I would go over here to the green plus sign. Now you can establish local connections or you can establish cloud connections, but our demo today is just going to be a new database connection. So we can click on the new database connection uh, we just click on the green plus, it's going to bring up a dialog box. This is the dialog box that also helps enable you kind of configure um, your connectivity. So I am trying to connect to Prim DB. And usually, I mean, you can put anything for the name, something that's going to help you uh, remember. So I'm going to connect maybe as the system user. So uh, there are some things here that I would want you to pay attention to. Now, within this, um, this field, uh, again, like I mentioned, you can put anything here that's going to help you remember the connection that you're connecting to. I usually choose the database name, and system would be the user that I'm trying to set up a connection uh, with. And that user certainly has to be able to be authenticated into the database. Now, my connection type, I would choose default. Now, I'm not using any other you know, connection type, uh, cable rules, operating system. I'm not using any of this. So I would leave it at default. And for the username, I would set it up to system. And one of the things that you need to mention, that you need to pay attention to is the role, the role of this user. Default would go for any other user uh, that, you know, uh, 
can be authenticated into the database. So a user that has been created or a schema um, that can be authenticated into the database. Now, if I was connecting as sys, I would want to make sure that I connect sys as sysdba. Anytime you're using sys to authenticate into the database, you want to uh, connect as sysdba. But because of course I'm connecting with system, I would leave this at the default. And my password for system is Oracle. And um, I wouldn't save the password yet. Uh, I would test the connection first to make sure that it works before I save the password and eventually save the connection. Now for my host name, remember, uh, when we did the ping using the command, uh, we did ping to uh, 192.168.56.101, which is the host, uh, the server IP. So I would copy this and bring it over to my SQL developer. And for the host name, I would use that IP address. Now, why I mentioned about TNS ping is so that you also understand what protocol is being used, what port number is being used, and what service name. Sometimes you might see service ID, which is the service identifier, but in this case, it is the service name. And we are connecting. Uh, this list, uh, the listener is listening on port 1521, so, uh, which is usually the default port. So when you pull up your connection dialog box, it usually would default to 1521. Now, if that port is different from where uh, your listener is listening to, this is where you make the adjustment. And for the service name, remember my service name is PrimDB. So I would put PrimDB into the service name location and I would test the connection. Now, there are several different connection types. We are sticking with the basic. Now, if you're using uh, as DBS, we certainly use uh, not all of this. I mean, I've worked in situations where I used LDAP, uh, where authentication is using an Active Directory, um, SSH or TNS. TNS is another interesting one that I like a lot, um, but this would require you uh, to download the TNS names.ora file and upload it to your SQL developer so that automatically it is able uh, to use your TNS admin uh, parameters to kind of resolve that, co uh, that connection. But we would stick with basic because we're establishing a basic connection. So if we double check and make sure all our parameters are correct, we run a test. And if we test, what we are looking for is a success here in the status. Now, if I see success, that means my success, my, my, my connection uh, is able to go through successfully. At this point, I will save the password and save the connection. Once I save the connection, it appears on the left side under your Oracle connections um, that has been established. Now I will go ahead and connect. Um, so now that creates a connection here as sys a system into PrimDB. And to test that connection, I can just go ahead and run a select star from dual, and it's gonna give me a dummy variable X right here. And I can run maybe some commands as well, select instance name status from V dollar instance. And once I run that, um, my instance name is PrimDB and my status is open. So there you have it. Um, setting up a SQL developer connection is pretty straightforward um, as long as you understand what parameters you need to pass into this. Now, this is not a video uh, where we would be showing you the full functionality of SQL developer. It's actually a pretty cool tool. Um, I do a lot of work um, in my databases using SQL Developer, especially you know, um, running SQL queries. This provides a much more user-friendly interface uh, for running my SQL queries. So uh, that is the end of the video. Um, if you do like it, uh, please go ahead, subscribe to the channel, enable notifications, um, and share with your friends. Thank you very much.